OK, effect of a volume change. If we change the volume of a gas and the temperature remains the same and the amount of gas remains the same, that's going to change the pressure of the gas. If we decrease the volume, that increases the pressure. We're squeezing that balloon. We're pressing the molecules closer together. It's essentially increasing the concentration of them. If we increase the volume, if we make the container larger, the gas will spread out and fill it up. The pressure will go down, and we can think of the concentration of the gas as going down. There's the same number of particles, but now they're spread out in a larger volume, and so the concentration is lower. When we lower the number of moles of gas, then we get a lower pressure. So PV equals nRT. If we reduce N, if we make N smaller, but the temperature and the volume have to be the same, then the pressure must be the thing that changes. If N goes down, P has to go down. Well, that's, the pressure change is a disturbance on an equilibrium. And it will relieve a pressure change by shifting in a direction that will change the number of moles of gas. So let's look at this equation, this chemical reaction. Here we have one nitrogen molecule and three hydrogen molecules. Those are our reactants. That's a total of four moles of gas. And these react to form two moles of ammonia. So the reactants have four moles of gas. The products have two moles of gas. If we push down on this piston and decrease the volume, we are increasing the pressure in here, right? The system says, I don't like that. I was happy the way things were. What can I do to shift it and reduce the pressure? Pressure is dependent on number of moles of gas. This side of the reaction has two moles of gas. This side has four. If the reaction shifts to the right, it can reduce the number of moles of gas, and that will reduce the pressure. Any questions or comments or thoughts about that? Where are the moles going? OK, so this is a good question. They're not going anywhere, but it's, it's a little bit like carpooling, OK? So on this side, we have um, two people in a car, two people in a car, two people in a car, two people in a car. Over here, we only have two cars, but they each have four people in them. Same number of people, fewer cars, more efficient, less gas, right? This particle is going to be larger than that particle, but the size of a gas molecule doesn't matter. It's the number of particles. Plenty to go up to Grant Grove tomorrow. They don't care what size vehicle you bring in, as long as it's not a commercial something. You know, if I bring an Expedition or if I bring um, a Honda Fit or one of those little smart cars, you pay the same, you pay per car per vehicle, no matter how many people are in there, right? So this allows you to have fewer vehicles. So what's happening is by shifting over here, we can make fewer particles of gas, and that reduces the pressure of the gas, because the gas depends on the number, I'm sorry, the gas pressure depends on the number of particles, not on what the particles are. That's a hard one to get your mind around. Yes? Yeah. There's fewer collisions. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. If we have all reactants, let's just say we had. Um, just this much, four moles. If we had all reactants, then we're going to have 
four different particles that can collide. If we shift completely to the product side, now there's only two particles that can collide with each other and with the container. The pressure is proportional to the collisions with the container. Fewer particles, fewer collisions, lower pressure. Yeah, what about the mass? The, the total mass of the reaction mixture will be the same because nothing's coming in or leaving. Mm -hmm. The mass of these particles will be different. The density of the gas will be different. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't come into play in terms of the position of the equilibrium. It's the pressure of the gas. So it's the, the increase in pressure For this reaction, if we increase the pressure by squishing it together, it will shift to the side with fewer moles of gas because that will help to reduce the pressure. It says, oh, you're putting pressure on me. I need to come up with a way to put out, get rid of the, some of this pressure. Well, if we all team up and, and get together here and make fewer particles, then the pressure goes down. It's probably still higher than it was before, but we've reduced the disturbance. Any other questions? Can you say that more bonding is occurring then? Um, more bonding is occurring, yeah. We're not going to concern ourselves with the energetics of breaking and making bonds. Mm -hmm. We're just looking at the effect of pressure on an equilibrium involving gases. Mm -hmm. And it will shift in a way to reduce the pressure. If you increase the pressure, it'll shift to reduce it. If you decrease the pressure, it'll shift to increase it. It's a general principle, the Chatelier's principle, that the equilibrium fights back against a disturbance. If we increase the volume, increasing the volume of this container decreases the pressure. The reaction mixture didn't like it when we increased the pressure, but it doesn't like it when we decrease it either, right? It's like, I just want it to be the way it was. We in increase the volume, decrease the pressure, and it's like, well, what can we do? Well, if we shift over this way and make more particles of gas, then the pressure will come back up somewhat, and that makes things better. So decreasing the volume of a chemical equilibrium involving gases causes it to shift to the side with fewer gas particles. Increasing the volume causes it to shift to a direction with more gas particles. If you have a reaction where the number of gas particles are the same on each side, then nothing happens. Nothing happens. Because shifting isn't going to do any good, so it won't shift. It'll only shift it if it can alleviate the change. If the number of gas particles is the same on each side, then the, uh, changing the volume will not have an effect. Let's just look at a specific example. Like if you have H2 plus Cl2 in equilibrium with 2 HCl. I have 2 moles of gas on the left side, and I have 2 moles of gas on the right side. If I change the volume of this container, which induces a pressure change, it's not going to shift at all because there's the same number of moles on each side. So it's only if the number of moles of gases are different. Mm -hmm. So let's look at this one. Um, all of these are gases. 2SO2 plus O2 makes 2SO3. What's the effect of decreasing the volume of the reaction mixture? I'm going to make the container smaller. What does that do to the pressure? The pressure goes up. The system says, ah, I want to reduce the pressure. It's going to shift to the side with more particles or fewer? Fewer. Fewer. OK, which side has fewer particles? This side has 2 plus 1, 3, and this side has 2. So decreasing the volume, oops, oops again. 
it's an oopsie day. We'll shift it to the right. If we increase the volume, that decreases the pressure. It's going to cause it to shift to the side with more particles. It will shift to the left. Increasing the volume will cause the pressure to go down. It'll shift to the side that will bring the pressure back up, the side with more particles. Any questions? 